Hey y'all, it's Andrea with The Cutest Little Thing. Thanks so much for hopping on to watch this video today. If you enjoy thrift flips, DIYs, home decor, upcycling, and all of the things, then you're at the right place. If you've never been to my channel before, welcome and I hope you like what you see. And if you've hung out with me before, thank you so much for coming back. All right, let's get started with today's projects. Okay, y'all, I have this piece here I grabbed out of my stash. It was a item I thrifted not too long ago, just giving it a good clean. As you can see, it had this little clip here, and I just unscrewed that. Then I sanded where that was screwed in and just kind of cleaned that up and filed that down where it was good and flush. And now I'm going in with the color Blue Pine. This is Fusion Paint that I'm using. This is a new color I got, and I just could not wait to use it. So I'm just giving this a good coat of paint all over. And as you can see, that wording on the bottom, it wasn't raised or anything. So um, I didn't worry about cleaning that up before I started and I went ahead and painted the edges. But as that paint dried, I helped it dry with my blow dryer here, it was raised a little bit. So I had to go over that with my piece of sandpaper. So I just sanded that down where it was flush with the rest of the piece. And then I just went and painted that back with that blue pine color. And that little tool you just saw, that little pink, tool there. That is a desk vacuum cleaner that I ordered off of Amazon. I will link that in the description. That has been my best friend. I love that little tool. If you don't have one, you need to get you one. It is a lifesaver when you're crafting to help you keep your space clean. Look at this cute image I purchased off of Etsy. These cute bird images they're like a winter scene, and I just love the colors and everything, and it just matched that blue pine color perfectly. So I'm just using Mod Podge here to decoupage this image. I just printed it on my regular inkjet printer on regular computer paper, and I'm just applying that Mod Podge mat all over where everywhere will be covered, where that paper is going to touch. And I'm just using a balled up piece of saran wrap to kind of rub and smooth out any wrinkles or creases that try to form while I have my blow dryer there on a low setting and just running that. And that heat is just kind of reactivating that Mod Podge and it's just helping smooth out all those well, there weren't a lot of wrinkles, but just smoothing out what wrinkles that were there. So after that dry completely, you want your Mod Podge to dry completely. I'm taking that sandpaper and just going in a downward motion around all of those edges and getting off the leftover or the hangover of the paper. Guys, these are some new molds I recently got. They're IOD, and I'm just going to make a little design for our piece. So you want to apply cornstarch or baking soda or something like that in your mold and just um, kind of brush out the excess. And here I'm just going in with that clay and I just sort of roll it into like a little snake shape and I just press and press that clay into that mold and you just kind of want to swipe with your finger to get it flattened there and to get any excess clay that you don't need. And you can just put that clay right back in the pack and use it later. What you, you know, scrape off and press off with your finger and get all the excess because you want it to be nice and flat and flush back there because that is going to be the back side of your clay piece. And just releasing that mold out of there. And I am sorry my head is in the way here. But what I'm doing, I have my X-Acto knife. And I'm just kind of 
cleaning up the edges of my molds, just getting any little pieces of clay that are sticking out off of those edges. And this is the olive crest mold. I can't remember if I said that already. I wanted to paint these molds before I applied them to my piece because I didn't want to get paint on my little bird image there. So I'm just going in with the color Truffle. It's a brown chalk paint in the Waverly. And I'm just coating those clay molds with that Truffle paint color. And I'm taking my little spritzer there with, with water and I'm just spritzing on some water and that's helping spread my paint around on those molds. And I just get a base coat there of my brown paint. I thought that would go really well with the branch in the image with the bird. And there's some other brown tones in there as well. I thought it complemented it pretty good. So now I'm ready to attach my mold to my piece. I've just got the E6000 glue there. I'm spreading onto the back of my mold and just kind of using the tip of that glue um, container to kind of spread it around. And carefully, I'm just positioning that clay mold onto the edge how I want it to stick there. And just lightly pressing that mold onto that piece and wiping away any excess glue that came out around the sides and just cleaning that up. And now I'm going to put this other mold piece on the other side. So again, just applying that E6000 glue and getting it spread really well. And just laying that right down and with the E6000 glue, you have a little while to play around with it and get it even and how you need it to lay. It doesn't dry suddenly like hot glue or anything like that. So now I'm going in with my Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax. This is in the white. And I'm just brushing on that white wax all on these molds here. And I'm completely covering those molds with that wax and just kind of brushing it in there all in the little cracks as well and crevices. By the way, I love this wax. I haven't had it too long. I've been using Waverly Wax, and then I was using DIY Wax. Um, I love them all for different reasons, but this really is good wax. I really love it. Now I'm just taking, this is a little ink pad I got from Hobby Lobby in the color Rusty Hinge. The, um, What's it called? The oxide stuff. I'm just taking that and rubbing along those edges because y'all look how perfect it matches that little bird and the other, there's some other hues of that same color in that image. And I'm just taking my blender brush and going all around the edges, just blending that in. And I also decided to wipe some on those clay molds as well, just to give variations of different colors. And I just love blending different waxes and colors together. It just makes a beautiful color. And now here's another one of those ink pads. This is the color Walnut, and I'm just doing that same technique, rubbing it along the edges, and then also just taking that blender brush and blending it in with the other colors and waxes, and also blending it on those clay molds as well, and on the sides and edges. And I just kept playing with it until I got it to look how I wanted it to look. And you can add as much or as little as you would like. And I even brushed over the image itself with the white wax and just kind of blended that in.
And now I'm taking the best, the Dixie Bell Best Dang Wax in the brown, and I'm doing the exact same thing, just going along those edges with it, and then I go over that, those clay molds as well. And I'm just blending that in with a stencil brush. And look how good that's looking, you guys. And I did just take my finger and kind of dab into that blue pine color, and I just rubbed over those clay molds as well, just to kind of tie some of that color in, and just it would just blend all together. See how pretty that looks? And now I'm just putting DIY clear. Look at this piece that I thrifted. I love the image on it, but I'm not crazy about the color. So I'm gonna go in, well first I'm gonna give it a good clean with some rubbing alcohol. It was in really good condition. The inside was really clean, but there was a little bit of, as you can see me sanding there, it was something sticky on it. So I just took my sandpaper and just kind of scuffed that off and gave it a good wipe down before I begin painting. First, I'm going to go in with this. This is Rust-Oleum's Milk Paint, and this is the color Eclipse, I believe. And um, I was going to give it one good coat of this, kind of um, using it as the, I wanted this to be like a gray color, and I was a little bit undecided if I was going to continue with this color. Um, but I'm just drying my first coat here. And I'm going ahead and doing a second coat of that same color. And I just painted over the little latch there and I painted over the little hinges in the back because this is a decorative piece um it's going to continue to be a decorative piece and it's you know not going to get a whole lot of um wear on it so and after we seal it up and everything I was not worried about you know the paint coming off or anything so I decided to come in with these beautiful transfers. These are Prima transfers. I'm pretty sure I will find out all of that information and put it in the description box below. But these are navy blue, and I thought that navy blue color was so pretty on that gray that we used with the Rust-Oleum. And I wanted to come in with this really large one right here in the front. So I'm just taking that transfer tool and rubbing on that transfer and then you just kind of pull up on that clear piece. Now this, um, I don't know if it was the material or the paint or what. Now I did get ahead of myself and did not seal that paint before I went in with that transfer. So when I saw how much trouble I was having, you can see there on the edge where some of my paint came up, I said, let me seal this because I don't want to have, I don't want to continue to have that trouble. So I took it outside and I sprayed it really, really well with that Rust-Oleum sealer there that I showed you. So I let that dry, took it back in. Now I'm continuing on and I'm sorry my head keeps getting in the way. So I'm continuing on applying these transfers um, that same brand of transfers and again I went in with that transfer tool and began applying on those transfers and I, I still you can see where my paint came up in some places it still was coming up I was getting so frustrated so I said well let me come in with another sealer so I grabbed my DIY clear wax and as you can see well I wanted to go ahead and seal in those transfers 
but I also rub this clear DIY wax over the entire piece because I wanted to be sure it was sealed um, really good because like I say that paint was coming up but now since this is a wax I was only doing this on the front because um, I was finished you know with the front applying transfers and everything because you're not supposed to apply transfers after you apply any type of wax but I was done applying transfers on this front so I went in with that clear wax first because this is my Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in the brown and I wanted to go in with I wanted to kind of dirty it up age it up a little bit so I wanted to go in with this brown wax and I just kind of highlighted the outer edges first and where that lid closes and around that latch. And now you can see me just kind of wiping away and blending that wax. And I'm just wiping away the excess. And as you can see, that look it gives. I was really liking that look. And that wax got on my paper towel. So um, when I would rub the piece, it would kind of put just a light coat of that wax everywhere else. And here you can see I'm doing the top the same way. I'm going around that. Um, I already applied my clear wax. And now I'm just going in with my brown wax and just kind of um, aging it up here. And I went around that handle really well. I'm letting that sit just a few minutes before I wipe the excess. Now, before I apply any waxes to the rest of the piece, this is the side of the piece. And I wanted to apply this um, little flower transfer on the side. So here I am doing that with my transfer tool. And again, that paint was trying to come up on me in some places. I just went with it. I just embraced... Um, I actually liked how you could see the original color kind of popping through in a couple of little places. And I just embraced it and continued on. And here again, I uh, sealed in that transfer with my DIY clear wax and applied it all on the side. Same technique with my brown wax, highlighting those edges a little darker than the rest of the piece and then just going over the entire side and now wiping back the excess and helping blend that wax in with my dry paper towel. And the back, I decided not to apply any transfers just because it is the back and it most likely will not be seen, but I did do the same technique with my waxes in the back. And there it is, you guys. And I did the um, same to the other side with my waxes. Let me know what you think of this. I love the way it ended up turning out. I was getting frustrated with my paint, but in the end, I think it looks beautiful. And let me know what you think of this one. I had this shadow box sitter slash hanger in my stash. First, it had a white pumpkin on it and I painted over that with black chalk paint. And then I changed my mind with what I wanted to do with this piece. So I'm painting over that with the fusion paint in the color raw silk. I coat that really well and I'm just spritzing with water to help spread my paint around here. I give that a good dry, just speed it along. Now I'm going in with the color Chateau in the Fusion Paint to paint that frame. The Chateau paint is just a little more of an off-white, like an ivory, a light ivory color, whereas this frame was already uh, like a bright white color. And I just wanted to tone that down just a bit. So I'm just touching up. I think here I'm doing the second coat of the raw silk, just touching that up. I got this sweet little birdie image off of an Etsy shop I purchased and I printed it out on my inkjet printer. I want to decoupage this image into this shadow box piece, but I'm going to put this grapevine around it sort of like a frame. So I want to uh, cut it where it will fit and it won't be sticking out past the grapevine wreath. And I'm just using my Mod Podge mat to decoupage this piece down. And you want to make sure you coat 
all the way where your paper is going to touch because you want that to adhere and not have any pieces trying to come up on you especially the edges and the corners you want to be sure you coat really well and I just place that down now I'm just hot gluing my little mini grapevine wreath over that like I say I want it to be like a frame just getting those hot glue strings now I'm just making a bow I wanted neutral color so I'm just using burlap pieces and some lace and just tying that all together with jute string I'm just adjusting those pieces how I want them and of course I had to embellish that with a little mini pine cone and I just hot glued that right to the top of that grapevine wreath now I'm going around with this um, moss reindeer moss and I'm just hot gluing that right along the inside edge of that little grapevine wreath I just thought that would add a cute little touch to add that moss there going around the birds and you can get this reindeer moss I pick up packs from Dollar Tree when I'm in there and you can also get it from Walmart or Hobby Lobby now I'm going in with my DIY dark wax and I just want to darken this frame a little bit so I'm just coating that all around the edge of this frame and I'm just getting a good bit on there and just brushing that in to this frame and then I just take a dry paper towel and wipe away any excess I didn't want to wipe away a lot of the excess though because I did want a good contrast with that dark wax and the rest of my frame and I'm also going in with a little bit of my Waverly antique wax those two waxes I love them both for different purposes I like to use them they just have a different effect And I also wanted to distress the sides of my frame with that dark wax as well. And just, I know I'm kind of out of the camera here and I apologize, but I'm just kind of brushing a little bit on with that paintbrush and then taking that dry paper towel and wiping back some of that excess. It just gives it a distressed look. More of a rustic look. And you can definitely skip this step if you do not want this distressed look and you just want it you want your frame painted you could skip that step altogether I decided to add a cute little embellishment at the bottom of my little shadow box these little birch pieces you can get them at Dollar Tree I've seen them there or Walmart and I'm just hot gluing on some of that reindeer moss on the top all around the edges I'm gluing that reindeer moss and now I have these little foam balls I had in my stash they were like little berries on an arrangement or something and I just picked those off and I hot glued those down in the center like a little eggs I'm jumping around here on you I decided I want a little bit of that antique wax on the inside of the frame as well to give it that same distressed look we did on the outside so I'm just taking a small paintbrush here and adding some of that dark wax like little scuff marks all on the inside of that frame now I'm hot gluing that little stump right down on the inside of our frame with our little eggs 
and I have this cute little bird. I get these in bundle packs off of Amazon. And I am just giving him I think I painted him blue. I'm sorry, y'all. I don't think he was already blue. I painted him blue, and then I just kind of dry brushed on some white on certain areas and hot glued him on another little, one of those little birch pieces with some of that reindeer moss around him, and I hot glued him on the other side, or her, I should say, <laughs> on the other side. And look how cute that turned out, you guys. I love it. Let me know what you think. I love birds anyway, so anything with birds, I'm going to love it. Thanks so much for joining me and watching. Don't forget to like and share this around. I'll see you on the next one. And here are our finished products one more time. We made this super cute bird piece using our molds and an Etsy image. We made over this really pretty decorative piece using some transfers. And last but not least, we flipped this little thrifted find into a beautiful bird sitter. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share around. I will see you on the next video.